We are back to even terms here in Champaign after three as Steven Rustich set to lead things off. Takes strike one on the outside corner. Rustich, the hero for Northwestern on Sunday, of course, with a walk off against Penn State. Another one of these guys who has increased his stock for sure over the last few weeks for the Cats. He's in an even count right now, one and one, and now a hitter's count at two and one. Looks like Kershaw seems to be staying to the outside here with Rustich at the plate. Goes a little bit more inside this time, but a bit low. And now three and one, Kershaper at risk of walking the leadoff man, Rustich. Kershaper's velo is down a little bit today. He's only about 86, 87. Usually he's, it's like 88 to 90. Of course, two weeks ago, as Rustich fouls that one off, two weeks ago he threw 114 pitches and an absolute gem in the win over Purdue. And then last week at Iowa, only went four innings. Arm fatigue was definitely on display and got roughed up a little bit. Do you think that's continuing this week, or do you think elevated a little bit and just Northwestern just having his number? No, definitely could be fatigued a little bit. I've, I've never seen his velo like this. Like I said, he's usually about 90, 91, down in the mid-80s right now, so he could still be feeling that outing from Purdue. A gives lot of pitches, like you mentioned. Gives up ball four here to Rustich. And the man responsible for the scoring for the Cats. Vincent Bianchina will now settle in. Yeah, when we do get to the point that the bullpen will have to be called in for Illinois, a bit of a positive development has been there. Starting to be a separation between the more reliable guys and the more inconsistent guys. At the beginning of the season, it was really you didn't know who was gonna screw up. You sort of had no control. It's the ultimate form of inconsistency. But now you have guys, you know, the Tommy Greens of the world, Joseph Glassies of the world. I'd throw Vera Weiniger and Ray Barchik in there as well, who have started to cement themselves into that sort of upper echelon of being clutch and consistent. Yeah, definitely seems like some guys are starting to establish themselves. Bianchina trying to establish himself here on this at bat already with a home run under his belt today. Takes one outside and then hitters count here, 2-0. And it seems like, too, they're trying to slow down Kershaper a little bit. He's a fast worker, we know that, but these Purdue players are, check that, these Northwestern players, are trying to slow things down a little bit, as we saw the Purdue players try and do against Kershaper two weeks ago. Yeah, they're just trying to throw off at the, his rhythm a little bit. It appears to be working this inning. 3-0 and oh here, he's at risk of loading on the first two men he's faced this inning. No activity yet in the Illinois bullpen. We do have someone stretching in the Northwestern bullpen, however, as the 3-0 from Kershaper is a strike. Of course, on Tuesday for Illinois, it was a bit of a bullpen game. Alec Vera threw four innings in that one, so a lot of much needed relief from him as that one is fouled off, and now three and two. Kershaber able to bounce back here. And so, historically, Illinois, as a lot of teams have, they'll, they'll throw a little bit to that bullpen guy, get some of the longer bullpen guys in there on Tuesday, and they'll put their ace in on Friday in order to take the load off of that bullpen a little bit, but perhaps less rest for the bullpen today, as we've talked about. Yeah, kind of those midweeks, you just kind of use them to uh, get some guys some innings that haven't pitched in a while. Looks like Kershaper will be able to rebound here, though, is that one right at second base, and Hazer able to retire Bianchina for out number one. So now if you're Illinois, you're at the very least keeping pace with Indiana, but time is running out to do that. Seven and a half left and it's a 15 point game. They need a stop on the defensive side. Grace Berger's the one now playing inside. Now Mackenzie Holmes. Pass too hot for Berger there. 
and Illinois looking to convert, looking to get it closer. Holmes responds to Genesis Bryant off the screen. Good defense there. Bryant, now the kick out. McKenzie in the corner for three. Doesn't get the roll, and McKenzie Holmes gets the rebound. Oh, that would have been a huge shot for the Illini if it went in. Moore McNeil too strong. Good body up there by Shoup Hill. Now Illinois starting to get some chances. Can they convert? Genesis Bryant too far off. Bostic in the right place at the right time. All right, well, there's another two-point basket, only a 13-point game. The Illini need another stop here. It's all about racking them up, getting them consecutively. Grace Berger smartly killing some time here, slowing down the pace ever so surely. Going inside, Mackenzie Holmes, she doesn't get the roll. And now here comes Genesis Bryant. She's been the hot hand from three for Illinois. And they smartly guard her at that line. She'll go inside instead. Circus shot too strong. But fight for it inside. And a foul called on Sydney Parrish. Lots of tussling in the interior there, but Brinshoop Hill coming up with it. That is huge for the Illini uh, after Genesis Bryant. Tried to hit a circus shot layup. Shoop Hill giving the Illini another chance to possibly make this a 10 point game. Hopefully just trying to cut into this lead a little bit more for the Illini. Three fouls for Indiana, none for Illinois in this quarter. Been much cleaner play, that's for sure. The free throw line may be a factor as Bryant can't hit that. That shot just seemed too forced to me. I mean, it seemed like Genesis Bryant felt like she had to shoot that. They didn't have any time to use the possession. It seemed like that's probably not the shot the Illini wanted there. And now Grace Berger slowing down the pace. And McKenzie will get charged with her third. So the first on Illinois in, in this quarter. And again, if you're Indiana, that gives you more time on the shot clock. Slow down the possession. Time is your friend. Sarah Scalia with it now, trying to drive in on Bryant. Back to Berger, and she will do the same. Shot clock down to single digits at six. And an offensive foul is called on the inside. Yeah. It's a push off assigned to Lily Meister. So now four for the Hoosiers. With that's, five minutes, 40 seconds left. That's absolutely the right call. Meister was moving there on the screen. Had no chance to get around it. Did the Illini. Right call by the officials there. So and now the Indiana's Illini. gone cold a bit as of late, and can Illinois cash in on that? That's the million-dollar question. Makaira Cook calling off the screen from Bostic. She's trying to find Genesis Bryant. She does. Bryant's crowded inside the lane, but that leaves the player wide open, and it's Bostic. Another stop here is vital for the Illini. they got to get the ball back. They said they got it. And they're getting Bostic involved in other ways, getting the bigs involved. Bostic nearing a double-double. 13 points, 9 rebounds. And Illinois, one bucket away from getting this back into single digits. Halfway down here in the fourth. Looking for an answer. Bryant with it now. Shoe pill. That's been her spot as of late, and she hits. Whoa. -ho -ho. All of a sudden, we got an eight-point game. Brent Shoe Pill delivers her second three of the night at the perfect time, George. And Indiana not going to call a timeout, going to let it play, but State Farm Center is getting loud. Illinois not going gentle into the good night. And now if you're Indiana, they've put up the best run of the game. Now how do you respond? You do it with Mackenzie Holmes, but she can't hit. And now back the other way. Bryant. Bostic going inside. Bryant take it herself, but a foul called on Mackenzie Holmes. That's her fourth. And she too is in disbelief. Pulled out to Illinois, taken away, however, quickly by the Redbirds on the near side. That's Matt Papakadisanthu. Papakadisanthu sends it around the trapezoid where it's taken now. Nice pass out to clear it, but undermanned a one-on-three, taking that now Joe Dorian for Illinois. 
On the near side, that's Jacob Midlinski. Illinois forced to reset and neutralize once again. That one goes right through the legs of McDonough, and the Redbirds will briefly control. Alpi sends a man down. Two more men go down. And Midlinski with a great play to gain an open angle. Too many sticks in the way there, though. It was great swarming defense by the Redbirds following that. Moving quickly now on the other side, Trevor Barrett. He takes a shot and a save made by Woodring. Moving in now, that's Sean Vian. And that goes right through Joe Dorian. Not the first time I've said this phrase tonight, not the last. Where have we seen that before for Illinois? The mistakes continuing to hurt them offensively. As the Redbirds take it now on the near side. Relegated to that near side corner, taken now by Illinois, that's Mark Mastanis. Mastanis trying to get in close, trying to clear it, taken away and quite nicely by Billy Carroll. He'll kill some more time now. And back to that near side corner. Pulled out, tried for a centering pass. It's off an Illinois stick. And back to neutral ice where the Redbirds try to clear. Applying pressure, Ettingen forcing a man to the far side. That's Joseph D'Alessandro, and now Illinois will chase it down. Taking that now, Atticus Helfer. And now Michael Garcia moving the other way for the Redbirds. A one on three, gets a shot off, and that goes wide. On the near side, Colin Young gets it back out to Gonzalez. Gonzalez sends one into no man's land, hoping for a redirect. But now it's Atticus Helfer taking it for Illinois over to Matt Veeve. Matt Veeve moving quickly, has a few men to his left. Finds one of them, that's Ettingen. He's harassed by Colin Young once again. Illinois being patient with it now as it's sent out to Alpi. His shot deflected in front. Trying to clear it now is John Panos, and he can. Out to Young. He's undermanned, a one on two, and the two win that battle as it's sent in now by Alec Bogdanoff. 15 minutes left in a one goal game. Illinois got one back from the point off the stick of Gregory Ettingen. Unable to handle that pass there is Sammons. Once again, a common theme for Illinois. Dorian moving in now. Shot block will force that pass right to a red sweater. Taking that one now, Michael Garcia. Garcia moving quickly on the near side, flings that one in. And Woodring says no. Joe Dorian moving quickly now. That's Sammons. Sammons forced to the outside by Trevor Glass. Sammons now hits him along the boards. It's kept to a white sweater. Illinois controlling here. Cole switches places with Dorian. His shot goes wide off of a few deflections. And taken now. The clear attempt from Panos is successful. Michael Lupo with it now. Goes through a few bodies, tried to get it in, and the Redbirds will have to tag back up. Atticus Helfer on the near side for Illinois. Able to send that one in, but the Redbirds control in their own defensive zone. A battle in the neutral zone over the last few possessions. Atticus Helfer makes a sweet move to get around a few. Helfer with a few more moves, right in front of shot, and the save made there. And that one into the netting off the stick of Jacob Midlinski. Atticus Helfer with some sweet moves there to make a few men miss. After a few back and forth neutral zone battles over the last few minutes. 13-25 left in this one. And again, the Redbirds up by one as a face off to the left of Meyer, one by Illinois. Alpi moving in, a shot off the post. That one somehow got close. And on Meyer, who's again played a great game in the crease for Illinois State. Illinois will reset on the near side, Nick Anderson. Anderson sends that one around to the near side, back to that near side corner, a very common spot where it's taken now by Josh Gilbert. Gilbert looking to clear it. Anderson gets a stick on it. That will briefly give Illinois possession and now they will fully reset. Anderson back in that near side corner. Trying to cut him off is Trevor Barrett. He cannot, although the pass too hot for Mastanis to handle. Mastanis chasing after it alongside Josh Gilbert. A few men go into the boards. Is taking that one now, Ettingen. Ettingen circling back over to Matt Vive. Matt Vive and Helfer. Helfer, nice pass over to Ettingen. That one off the stick. Now back to Ettingen. 
Moving across, Helfer one time or deflected in front. Great defense right there from Oliver Grigg. Back over to Mustanis. Mustanis, nice pass out to Ettingen. A lot of traffic in front, that's stopping these Illinois shots. Back again to Ettingen, shot goes wide. Redbirds crowding the middle of the ice in this third period ever since that goal from Gregory Ettingen. And it's paying dividends here as both teams with a line change. Moving quickly now, trying to take advantage of that is Alexander Matveev, but the Redbirds will control in their own trapezoid. Adam Traska with it now, turns it over. Nick Anderson with a shot, save man! Rebound chance for Ettingen, he couldn't get stick to puck. 